So my name is Frank McKenna. I'm here at UC Berkeley working for the Neary Sim Center. This is a short video showing the incremental changes that the C++ language brings to C. C++ program structure, it's very similar to the a C program structure. We have our preprocessor commands, functions, variables, statements, and expressions, comments. And what C++ brings in now is classes and it also provides some minor tweaks to the C language for missing functionality. So here is a hello world in the C++ language and bottom right is in the C language. They are very similar, slightly different. Instead of including standard IO, we include IO stream. Note there's no .h. We have int main is the same for our comments now. It's two forward slashes. At the start of a line, we'll comment out that line. In C++ we had the forward slash and a star, and then at the end of the comment we had a, had a star forward slash, so we no, no longer have to have those two characters at the end. For output, we can send things to standard out using the insertion operator. We're inserting the string into the stream, and then finally we both have a return zero, so that part is not changed. So now let us look at how we deal with memory go coming and returning to the heap. Before we had malloc and free, they have been replaced by new and delete. Here is an example of new, where we're allocating a double array from the heap. You see it's an awful lot cleaner than before. We no longer have to specify n times the size of double. Now the compiler is smart enough to know that if we want an array of double, it knows the, the number of bytes to obtain if we just specify the, the n. Also, we no longer have to do that cast from void pointer to whatever type we have, so that cast is gone. So this new looks a lot cleaner. It is what replaces malloc. And also down here we have, this is what is replacing free. The one thing to note, when you malloc, or when you new an array with the square brackets here, where the square brackets indicates we're creating an array of n objects. When we return the objects to the heap, we have to tell the compiler that this was an array we nude, so we have to put in the square brackets. So now strings, we have a whole new type added to the language strings. Remember we had that little problem, there was no strings in C. The compiler was automatically throwing in that special character at the end. Now we have strings and we can do fun stuff with strings. Um, we can plus equals them. We can add a string to a string and we can send a string directly to standard out. So C++ also now introduces a pass by reference option for our variables. In this example here, I have two functions. One is sum1, the other is sum2. Sum1 is a what would appear in a C program. Remember C, it, all, it can also appear in a C++ program. Sum2 is this new function that's only available in C++, where we have this ampersand C. Ampersand C means it's now being passed by reference. So if we look at sum2, we see it's ampersand C. And if you look at the assignment, it's just C equals A plus B. We do not have to do dollar $C equals A plus B that we had to do if we pass it through a pointer. And calling the two functions is different. Sum1, we're having to pass in the address of Z. But in sum2, because this is a reference, we just say X, Y, Z. So again, it's an awful lot cleaner and simpler now to pass by reference. All we, and all we have to do is just change the, the function definition to say to indicate that it's coming in by, by reference. Also, what is now provided with C++ is a bunch of built-in data structures. They provide all the common data structures um, that somebody might use. So the, the onus on the developer to provide their own library of data structures is now gone. And I'll hold off from providing an example for now. I do do an example at the end of the next video. And of course, they bring in the concept of class. Now, typically when you develop classes, you're gonna put the implementation in one file, the .cpp file, and we're gonna put the interface in another, the .h file. This allows us for that encapsul encapsulation. It means that we can come along later and change to anything in the .cpp file and it does not affect any other program 
that uses the class and the .h file sometimes if we do change the the data the, the variables that are inside the class the other code does have to be recompiled but the other code as long as we do not change the methods defined in the .h class they do not have to change so i thought now we'd go on and do an example <clears throat> 